questions 11 through 20 on the 2013 Grade 8 AMC 8. Ted's grandfather uses his treadmill on three days a week. Well, he went two miles each day. On Monday, he jogged at a speed of five miles per hour. He walked at a rate of three miles per hour on Wednesday and four miles per hour on Friday. If grandfather had always walked four miles per hour, he would have spent less time on the treadmill. How many minutes less? The first scenario, we have Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And remember, speed is equal to distance over time, or time is equal to distance over speed. So on Monday, the speed was 5 miles per hour, and the distances are always 2. And then on Wednesday, it was uh, 3 and 4. So let's figure out the times. So it's distance over speed. So the time here is going to be 2 over 5. The time here is 2 over 3. And the time here is 2 over 4, which is really a half. If you add up all these times, you got 2 over 5 plus 2 over 3 plus 1 half. And in terms of common f denominator, what's that? 30. So it's going to be 12 plus 20 plus 15. And that is 47 over 30. Or you can multiply top and bottom by 2, 94 over 60. All right, so that looks like 94 minutes. Okay, now we got to look at the scenario again, but this time he is walking 4 miles per hour on, on each of the three days. So these speeds now become 4, 4, and 4, and the distances are the same, 2, 2, and 2. So the times now are just 2 over 4, each of these 2 over 4, which is a half. So if you total up the times, it's a half plus a half plus a half, which is 3 over 2, which is in terms of uh, like 60 minutes, multiply top and bottom by 30, you get 90 over 60, so that's 90 minutes. So it's 94 minutes in that scenario, 90 minutes in that scenario, so obviously it's 4 minutes less. So number 11, the answer is D. At the 2013 Winnebago County Fair, a vendor is offering a fair special on sandals. If you buy one pair of sandals at a regular price of 50, you get a second pair at a 40% discount and a third pair at half the regular price. Javier took advantage of the fair special to buy three pairs of sandals. What percentage of the $150 regular price did he save? The first pair, the second pair, and the third pair. The first he spends 50 bucks, and then the second pair is at a 40% discount, so he's going to pay 60% of the price, so he's going to pay 0 0.6 times 50, which is $30. And then the third pair, he gets half of the regular price, so half of 50 is 25. So in total, he paid 50 plus 30 plus 25 for the three sandals, and that is $105. So they're saying when you take 105 and compare it to 150, what is the percent discount? Well, this is 70%. So that means he paid 70%, so his discount was 30%. So discount of 30% on the regular price, which would have been 150 So number 12, the answer is B. When Clara totaled her scores, she inadvertently reversed the unit's digit and the tens digit of one score, by which of the following might her incorrect sum have differed from the correct one. Well, we have a certain bunch of scores, and we have no idea what they are, so we'll just call them X. And then we have this one score in particular that was originally of the form AB. But what she did was she, instead of adding AB, she added BA. She inadvertently reversed the order of the units digit and the tens digit. So they're saying when you compare this whole sum to that whole sum, and you take, uh, I guess, the difference, which one of these could it be? All right, well, let's see. This AB is really written as 10A plus B, right? Because if you have a number like AB, 54, for example, we don't write it as 5 plus 4. That would be incorrect. We write it as 5 times 10 plus 4. 
which would basically be 50 plus 4, which is 54. So that's why this really is represented pr properly by 10a plus b. And then same thing over here, this b plus a would be 10b plus a. And then we have to get a, a difference. So that is going to be x plus 10a plus b minus x minus 10b minus a. So the x's cancel, and then 10a minus a is 9a. b minus 10b is minus 9b. Factor out a 9, and you get a minus b. Well, at this point, you think, well, how on earth am I supposed to get any numbers with this? I don't know what is a or b. It doesn't matter, because notice, that number is a multiple of 9. Whatever a and b are, you then multiply it by 9. So these answer choices, the correct one is the one that is also a multiple of 9. And only one of these is a multiple of 9, and that is 45. Because 45 is 9 times 5. So number 13, the answer is A. Abe holds one green and one red jelly bean. B holds one green, one yellow, and two red jelly beans in her hand. Each randomly picks a jelly bean to show the other what is the probability that the colors match. So Abe has one green and one red. And then B has one green, one yellow, and she has two red jelly beans. Okay, when we want these to match, okay, let's talk about it. Abe, if he picks one at random, let's say he picks the green. If he picks the green, there's one half chance he can pick a green. He has only two, so choosing a green out of two, there's one half chance. Now, I have to end, B has to choose a green. Now, for her, that's one over four. The probability that she chooses a green is 1 out of 4 because she has only one green. She has four jelly beans. So this is the first scenario that they could both have chosen a jelly bean that matches colors. Then we have to add to it because this is or. You could have two reds. So Abe can choose a red with the probability of a half. And then B can choose a red with the probability of 2 over 4. So this will be my answer. The first one is 1 over 8, and the second one is 2 over 8, and if you add it, you get 3 over 8. There you go. Number 14 is C. If 3 to the power of p plus 3 to the power of 4 is 90, 2 to the power of r plus 44 is 76, 5 to the power of 3 plus 6 to the power of s is 1, 4, 2, 1, what is the product of pqrs? So this question is basically saying find p times r times s. Okay, one by one we'll find both of all three. 3 to the power of p plus 3 to the power of 4 is 90. So 3 to the power of p is 90 minus 3 to the power of 4. 3 to the power of 4 is 81. So that would be 90 minus 81 and that is 9. So 3 to the power of p is 9. 3 to the power of p, 9 is uh, 3 squared so that means p is equal to 2. There we go, we just got 1. Now let's figure out the next one. That's 2 to the power of r plus 44 is 76. So 2 to the power of r is 76 minus 44. 76 minus 44 is 32. And 32 is 2 to the power of 5. So that means that r is equal to 5. And then last one is 5 to the power of 3 plus 6 to the power of s is 1, 4, 2, 1. 5 to the power of 3 we can put on the other side. So 6 to the power of s is 1, 4, 2, 1 minus 5 to the power of 3, which is 125. So 6 to the power of s is 1, 2, 9, 6. 1, 2, 9, 6 is 6 to the power of 4. And therefore s is equal to 4. So that means p times r times s is 2 times 5 times 4, and that is 40. So number 15, the answer is b. A number of students from Fibonacci Middle School are taking part in a community service project. 
this the ratio of eighth graders to sixth graders is five to three, and the ratio of eighth graders to seventh graders is eight to five. What is the smallest number of students that could be participating in this project? Well, eighth graders to sixth graders, they have this ratio of five to three. Okay, and then we have uh, eighth graders to seventh graders is the ratio eight to five. Okay, so I have eighth graders, seventh graders, and sixth grader graders. And I'll just give them A, B, and C. It just, I think, makes it less confusing. So these equations basically become A over C is 5 over 3. And A over B is 8 over 5. Okay. Well, 5C, therefore, is 3A over here. And that means A is 5C over 3. Plug that into here, this would be 8B is 5A. But instead of A, I can put in this guy. So that's going to be 5C over 3 is 8B. And then B over C would basically be 25 over 24. OK. So B over C is 25 over 24, and that is in lowest terms. You can't reduce that anymore because uh, top and bottom do not have common factors. Top is just 5 times 5, and the bottom doesn't have a factor of 5. So since those are in lowest terms, this has to be 25, and this has to be 24. Big numbers, but that's the lowest they can be in order for this to work. So now all I have to do is figure out A. Well, I can use that to figure out A. 5 times 24 divided by 3. And that looks like 24 divided by 3 is 8, so 8 times 5 is 40. So that's it. Big numbers, but those are the smallest numbers, interestingly. If you add them up, you get 49 plus 40, which is 89. That's the total number of students at that middle school, grades 6, 7, and 8. Answer is E for number 16. The sum of six consecutive positive integers is 2013. What is the largest of these six integers? Six consecutive x, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, x plus 4, and x plus 5. And of course, it's the sum, so I've got to add them all up. And when you add them all up, the total is 2013. Okay, let's do the algebra here. So that's uh, 6x. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 15, and that's 2013. 6x, therefore, is 1998, and then x is 1998 divided by 6, which is 333. They want the largest. The largest of those 6 was this guy, x plus 5. So x plus 5 is 338. So number 17, the answer is b. Isabella uses one-foot cubicle blocks to build a rectangular fort that is 12 feet long, 10 feet wide, and 5 feet high. The floor and the four walls, the floor and the four walls are all one foot thick. How many blocks did this fort contain? Well, I think a lot of students might miss this right here, floor. The floor has to be counted too. You can see the floor here, I think, but that's something a little bit tricky. So the floor has to be counted. So that's the first thing we have to take out. And that's going to be one full slab of dimensions 10 times 12 times 1. OK? They tell you that. One foot thick is the floor. So that is 120. And each of these one foot cubicle blocks has a, a volume of 1, right? Because it's just a 1 by 1 by 1 cube. So 120 obviously would contain 120. So that's the floor. So it contains 120 of those cubicle blocks. Now we have to look at the four walls. All right. So let's chop this like that and that like that. And when you chop it, you'll notice something interesting, that each of these become the same dimensions. If you use the first one that is closest to you, you'll notice the dimensions of that wall 
are 10 by, be careful, this is now 4, even though top to bottom is 5, we had to use the bottom 1 for the floor. So we're just left with 4 from here to here. And then, of course, from there to there is 1. So 10 by 4 by 1 is the dimensions of each of these slabs that make up the wall. And then this guy on the side is also going to be the exact same dimensions. Because if you notice, this whole thing was 12, but then we chopped off 1 on either end. So it becomes 10, and then the height is 4, and then the width is 1. So we have four identical slabs that all have that dimension. So we have to multiply this by 4, since there's 4 of them. So that's 4 times 10 times 4, which is 4 times 40. So that's 160. And these are the ones that make up the walls. So the total would be this plus this, which is 280. That's how many blocks you need to make the fort. So number 18, the answer is B. Bridget, Cassie, and Hannah are discussing the results of their last math test. Hannah shows Bridget and Cassie her test, but Bridget and Cassie don't show their test to anybody. Cassie says, I didn't get the lowest score in our class, and Bridget adds, I didn't get the highest score. What is the ranking of the three girls from highest to lowest? We have Bridget, Cassie, and Hannah. And Hannah's the only one who actually shows her score. So these two, I guess, they keep their scores a secret or hidden, I guess. So both of them get to see Hannah's score. When Cassie sees Hannah's score, she says, I didn't get the lowest score in our class because her score obviously is greater than Hannah's. That's why she can make that conclusion. She looks at Hannah's score and says, well, her score is lower than mine, so I, I didn't get the lowest score. So that's the first conclusion. Then Bridget, she looks at Hannah's score and says, I didn't get the highest score. Why does she say that? Because obviously Hannah's score must have been higher. So that means Hannah's score is higher than Bridget's. Okay? So if you put these two inequalities together, you get the following. You get Cassie has a higher score than Hannah, but Hannah has a higher score than Bridget. So if you were to rank them from highest to lowest, highest is Cassie, then Hannah, and then Bridget. So Cassie, Hannah, Bridget is the ranking from highest to lowest. And of the answer choices, that would be choice D. A 1 by 2 rectangle is inscribed in a semicircle with the longer side on the diameter. What is the area of the semicircle? So we have this uh, circle, and then let's draw a di diameter. So that's the approximate diameter. And then we have this uh, 1 by 2 rectangle. So this is 1 and this is 2. And they want you to find the area of the semicircle. Well, the first thing to do, of course, is to draw a line from the center to the vertice right there and that of course will represent the radius of that circle and then just to make things a bit clear I'll draw a line from that center to the top of that rectangle and hopefully you'll be able to see that that chops that side into half so if the whole side is two this now becomes one and this becomes one well this is one from top to bottom because this is one and this is one and then this is also 1, since it's the same as that. So we've got this Pythagorean relationship right here, or right here, either way. So that means 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to r squared. So that means 1 plus 1 is r squared. So that means 2 is r squared, or r is equal to root 2. So what do they want? The area of the semicircle. So the area of a circle is pi r squared, the area of a semicircle would be pi r squared divided by 2. So let's substitute in r squared is 2. So we have 2 divided by 2, and that just becomes pi. And that's it. Number 20, the answer is C.